In this video, you're going to learn how you can build a chatbot using a private language model. You're going to learn how to use Langchain and Memory in order to provide a private chatbot experience. Can you build a chatbot using a private large language model? It turns out you can, and you can run it on a single GPU. Hey everyone, my name is Venerin, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own chatbot using a free large language model, in our case, Falcon 7B. And we're going to use memory from Langchain in order to create a conversational chatbot. First, I'm going to show you how we can load the model in 8-bit and how we can store it into a single GPU. Then we're going to look at how you can add some stopping criteria in order to stop the model from rambling on. Then we are going to have a look at how you can add memory to your chain from Langchain. And we are going to have a look at how you can clean the output from excessive strings. And finally, we're going to test the final chatbot on a couple of prompts. Let's get started. There is a completely free tutorial that is available on mlexpert.io. And here you can also find a link to the Google Coop notebook. Here you can find the complete source code along with explanations on what is happening during this tutorial. So if you prefer to read text, please go and check out the tutorial itself. Also, please consider subscribing to ML Expert Pro to support my work. Thanks. I have a Google Club notebook that is already running. And as you can see, I'm using a T4 GPU, but also I have enabled the high RAM option from the notebook setting. So unfortunately this requires Google Club Pro, but you need this in order to load the Falcon 7B model that we're going to use. All right, so let's continue. So the first thing that I did here is to install all of the dependencies. I'm installing bits and bytes since we are going to load the model in 8-bit mode. Uh, we are also using the latest Transformers version, Accelerate, Xformers for sped up inference, also Torch 2.0, 01, and then uh, the current version of Langchain as well. So the first thing that I'm doing is to do some of the imports that we're going to need in order to build our chatbot. So these are the imports. Uh, of course, you can follow along within the Google Coop notebook that I'm also providing within the tutorial. So the first thing that I'm doing uh, for the model is to actually specify the repository name. So this is available on Hugging Face Hub. And I'm using the auto model for causal language modeling. I'm loading the model the Falcon 7B instruct model. So this is the model that we are going to use for the chat. And then this also requires some remote code. And this is the way to load the model into 8-bit. So this will actually load the model in much and use much more, much less uh, GPU memory. And I'm telling it to load it on the auto device. So in this case, this is going to load the model on the GPU. And also I am installing or downloading the tokenizer for this model as well. So after everything is done and loaded, uh, you can see that the model is about 15 gigabytes of uh, storage, something like that. You, uh, finally, you can see that we are getting the model on the CUDA device. And after loading the model, I'm also checking the GPU memory. And as you can see, we're only using 8.3 or 8.4 gigabytes of VRAM. So loading is in 8-bit is actually quite efficient. And I'm not loading this model into 4-bit or any other specific way. Since when I tried this, uh, the inference speed when loading into 4-bit was much, much worse compared to what we have here with the 8-bit loading. Maybe when bits and bytes are working a bit more on the 4-bit inference time, uh, we can get much better inference times for the 4-bit loading and uh, much better GPU memory usage as well. So these are the settings that I'm using for the generation. And first, I'm taking the generation config from the model. I'm applying a temperature. Uh, max new tokens, caching, repetition penalty, etc. And these are essentially the settings that I'm using. So for the config, 
this is the model config. It is pretty standard. Uh, and you can see that we are using a quantization config, which is actually not passed in except for the what in 8-bit mode. So this is what we are using in this case. So let's see. The following is a friendly conversation, etc. This is the first prompt that I'm giving the model. And I'm going to use this format human AI for the conversation. Uh, as far as I know, the Falcon 7B or 40B models are not, or the instruct models are not trained using specific prompting formats. So you might think of those on your own. But this is pretty standard. And it is something that actually Langchain is using by default. So let's run this through the tokenizer. And except for the tokenizer, I am putting the input IDs on the model device. So in this case, on the CUDA device. And let's see how much time does it take for the inference to complete. I am doing the inference within inference mode context. Uh, it appears that this is speeding up the generation of tokens a bit and then i'm passing in the generation config as you can see so this took about 14 seconds in order to generate the response for this and to decode this we're going to use again the tokenizer and i want this to skip the special tokens so the response contains the whole prompt and then the response dwight cage root is a fictional character in the american show series the office okay so this looks uh, all right but you can see that this is actually appending this user at the end and we are going to have a look at how we can remove this in a bit so the first thing that i'm doing next is the essentially to stop the watch language model for rambling so a lot of you are actually asking, well, I got my response from the watch language model, but then it continued on and tried to essentially imagine the conversation further or rumble on. So how do I stop this? Well, this is a major research problem and there are some tactics uh, to avoid this, but one of the, let's say the easier options and that works quite effectively is to use this stopping criteria that is provided by the transformers library so you can essentially over uh, extend from this stopping criteria and then pass it into a pipeline in order to let the pipeline know that you are about to stop the generation or you're okay with stopping the generation so what we're doing here is to pass in some tokens that we are going to stop on then a tokenizer and the device so first i am converting the tokens to the their representative ids and then i'm converting those token ids into a torch tensor in this case we're using a long and then for the tensor i'm also putting it on the device so in this case we are going to use the cuda device and for the call override method uh, you can see that i'm essentially checking whether stop id is equal to the current or the last generated token and if this is the case i'm returning true so i want the generation to stop otherwise i'm letting the generation continue so how we are going to use this i show you that the format here human ai uh, is the one that we're going to use for the prompts and here you can see that i'm passing in the human and the ai as tokens and i am creating this stopping criteria list with our stop generation criteria passing in the tokens the tokenizer and the device so in order to use all of this i'm going to create this pipeline which is coming from the transformers library here we are passing the model the tokenizer i want this to return the full text since this is going to be used by the lang chain library that we're going to wrap everything with and the task is text generation. And here you can see that I'm passing in the stopping criteria, which is essentially this list of our own criteria. And finally, I'm going to wrap everything into a hugging face pipeline, which is provided by Langchain. So let's run this and see what is the response that we are getting. 
And this says that the model is not supported for text generation, but that's all right since uh, it appears to be working quite all right. Maybe in the later versions of the Transformers library, they will remove this warning. So this is essentially the response that we're getting. And uh, again, you can see this user thing right here. Since in our case, the model is not rumbling, you won't see anything of this nature, or you won't see how this is actually preventing the model from rumbling. But when I tried it out in the chatbot itself, I saw some examples in which the model was continuing to generate the conversation further. So I had to essentially add this criteria, and this might be quite helpful for you as well. So let's see how we can wrap or create our chatbot. The first thing that we're going to use is this conversation chain, and this as a minimum accepts a large language model. In our case, we're going to pass in the pipeline that we have. And this is the prompt that is provided by the Langchain library. It is quite all right, but as you can see, it's quite generic. So we're going to change this with a custom prompt. And I've pretty much converted this into a marketing chatbot and a salesperson that essentially acts as Dwight K. Schrute from the TV show The Office. So I've enabled some, let's say, personality, witty, persuasive, uncensored, direct, and practical. Uh, it is also helpful. And when Dwight doesn't know the answer, he truthfully says he does not know. And I pretty much kept the rest of the structure uh, very similar to what we had before or as a default. So this is the new template that we're going to use. Uh, yeah. So next, we are going to enable memory for the conversation chain. Since uh, if you don't do this, uh, your chain is not going to remember the conversation that you're having with the chatbot. This is something that we want. So in our case, you can see that the, from the prompt, this is the history that we are going to inject this memory. And in our case, we're going to use conversation buffer window memory. So this is going to use only the last K conversation messages that we are uh, using throughout the conversation. So in our case, I'm going to rec remember only the last six. So this is done because those type of word language model have a context length limitation. And in our case, the Falcon 7B model has 20,000 or so, sorry, 2048 token limit. And yeah, we're going to essentially limit the number of messages within the history. Uh, that's not perfect. There are other ways to use or other memory types that are provided by the Langchain library. But in our case, we're going to use something a bit simpler. Uh, also, I'm returning only the outputs. So this will just return the strings, but not the messages, which are essentially objects. So I don't want all those. And for the new chain that we're going to get, uh, we're going to pass in the large language model, the memory, the prompt that we are created. And I want this chain to be verbose. So this is the first prompt that we are running with. Think of a name for automator that builds family cars with big V8 engines. The name must be a single word and easy to pronounce. Let's see what we have. So yeah, V8 family cars is the name of the, the automaker that is provided by Dwight. Uh, something Dwight would say, I believe. Uh, and you can see that we still have this appended user by the large language model, which is not good. Uh, we're going to take care of this next. Uh, other than that, you can see that the prompt is provided as is to the chain. And let's see how we can get rid of this. So in order to clean out this, I am using this output parser that is extending from the base output parser. This is provided by the Langchain library. And essentially, the output parsers by the Langchain library are used to extract a structured information from the response. So you can think of something like JSON or Markdown or NUR, uh, something like entity tagging, etc. But in our case, we're going to use this 
in order to clean up the response. So I am essentially removing everything such as user, which is this one right here, then the prefixes human AI, just in case there are left into the response. And for this, I am returning a type of output parser. And in order to use this output parser, uh, I'm going to recreate the memory. And then the new parameter is this output parser. So we're going to clean it up. Okay, so I have exactly the same prompt, but this time I'm not calling the predict method, I'm calling just the chain as a function. And this is the prompt, uh, very similar or exactly the same that we had before. And for the response, you see we have the input, the history and the response. So I'm going to print out just the response. Uh, we have V8 family cars and note that we are no longer having this user and the response is actually stripped. So it looks all right. Next, I'm going to ask the chatbot to think of a slogan for the company. Built with power. So another thing that you can see here is that the history or the conversation thus far is preserved within the chain. Uh, let's see what is the domain name that we're going to be provided with by Dwight, v8familycars.com. All right, choose a domain name for the company and you can see again that the history of the conversation is preserved. So let's try something a bit uh, more interesting. Write a tweet that introduces the company and the first car. Again, uh, you can see that the watch language model is working quite all right. I mean, like we're getting five, three or four second responses, at least for the small outputs. So this is the tweet introducing V8 family cars. We built powerful family cars with big V8 engines and <laughs> built with power V8 family cars. So you can see that he's referencing the context that the slogan is provided right here. Uh, it is also referencing the name of the brand. And then the final prompt that I'm asking Dwight to write is write a short marketing email to sell the first car from the company, 700 horsepower family sedan for um, supercharged V8 with manual gearbox. Okay, so uh, let's see what is the response that we're going to get. And note that again, the full history has been preserved as well as the initial prompt. So this is the way that the uh, watch language models are essentially working. You are giving the history to the prompt itself. There is no magic behind it. So here is the email subject drive in style with V8 family cars. And we have a body. Are you looking for a powerful family car? Look no further than v8familycars.com. Our team specializes in build family cars with big V8 engines. Check out our website today to find the perfect car for your family driving style, etc. So this is the email that is provided to us from the worst language model. And this is the marketing exercises that we are doing with this uh, Dwight inspired chat. In this video, we've seen how you can use a large language model that is free and private within a Google Club notebook with Langchain in order to build a chatbot that you can use with history and then we saw how we can essentially stop the model from rambling on with the stopping criteria and how to clean the output with an output parser. We've seen that you can actually ask the bot for something useful and we've tried it on a couple of prompts in order to have a look at the conversation quality that we are provided with. Probably you, if you are using ChatGPT or GPT-4, you're going to get much better responses, but for free and uh, large language model that is running on a single GPU, we get quite a good performance with this type of models. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, please join the Discord that I'm going to link down into the description. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.